Welcome back. This is still one on one on Plus TV Africa. Still on education, technology, and entrepreneurship, we've got Dr. Tsunji Adigbeso joining us. He's the founder and CEO of Gidi Mobile Limited. He is globally respected as one of Africa's top scholars of competitive strategy, as well as one of her leading experts on the mobile te telecommunications industry. Hello, Mr. Adigbeso. Or should I say Dr. Adigbeso? Well, yes, anyone. Most people just call me TJ anyway. <laughs> okay, TJ. So you are someone who is passionate about education effectiveness. What does this mean to you and how has this been an issue in Nigeria? Okay. So, yes, yeah, so um, educational outcomes and, um, you know, what you get out of education, what education does for you is the core of the educational endeavor. And it's, um, it's been a passion for me because Nigeria is a young country. Africa is a young continent. Nigeria is one of the youngest. And we have 100 million youth below the age of 18. And these 100 million people need um, to get livelihoods. They need to be able to put food on the table. And that is what the educational system is supposed to do for them among other things. So till date, we have very low indices in terms of um, educational effectiveness, right? So for example, the senior high school sector where I work, you have a situation where over the past 15 years, in general, we have an average of 72%, you know, um, not um, passing, uh, achieving minimum standards of educational preparedness. You know, even in professional organizations, the other day there was reports in the law school saying that, you know, they are having historic, um, historically poor performance in terms of the graduates they're receiving. You talk to employers, you talk all over the nation. We have an educational system where we push people through the tube. The people come out of the tube happy holding a sheet of paper, but very, a very low percentage has actually learned. So we just wasted everybody's time. Because the objective of education is not to go to school. So being educated and having gone to school are two separately, two totally separate things. Our objective is not to go to school. Our objective is to deliver a young uh, workforce, a young nation ready for the future. And if we're not doing that, we're deceiving ourselves because <clears throat> we are the ones who have to deal with the social problem. So it's a big problem. Most people just think about delivery just get people through. But what they're there for and what they'll be able to do with it afterwards is a huger problem. And um, we're failing. We're really failing in America. Mm. We don't do well with data gathering and statistics. But like you have just said, and um, with what the little we have is showing, approximately 70% of Nigeria school leavers have failed the secondary school leaving examination each year. So what is the problem yeah. with yeah. our learning system? Well, so in that particular one, yeah, so and that to break down that statistic, what it really means is if you take <clears throat> why has is a certification exam on like jam, which is a matriculation exam. So matriculation exam is is a sorting exam. So we have this number of places we want to get some people inside, so we want to rank them and put them in there. Whereas um, the certification, the uh, West African Senior School Certificate exam, says after you've gone through this course of study, what do you know across this field? So that's really what a credit is. A credit is that you have creditable performance and level of knowledge in that thing. So if you take as a rule of thumb <clears throat> what is normally used, five credits, including English and math, then you see that on average 72% have not achieved that. And there are four major areas that um, result in that outcome. It's the educational institutions, it's teachers, sociocultural context, as they call it, and then the learners. And I'm convinced the learners are the biggest piece. So the educational institutions is in terms of the number, you know, and how well run they are which is always forgotten, by the way. People tend to think just in terms of the facilities they have. The facilities are 30% of the problem if you were to put figures on it. If you have a very excellent teacher who is teaching you under a tree, you will learn. Please, I don't want anybody to be taught under a tree. But we have to look at the running of those institutions in addition to facilities. Secondly, the teachers. We don't have enough. I like, that, well you, I like that you got into the teachers. So... 
What sort yeah. of trainings do they require that they do not have right now, in your opinion? <clears throat> well, so in my opinion, um, there are two... There, there, so I, I think it's not so much the type of training. Okay. I think it is who goes into teaching. And that third one I said, social cultural context, is what we value, right? So if we think, maybe in the 60s, a long time ago, my mom used to tell me that, you know, in a society, you said this person is a teacher. Wow, people, you want to marry somebody and say he's a teacher's daughter or teacher's father, son. They'll say that must be a very respectable person. If you say that today, they'll say, my friend, please, will you go and be serious and find a billionaire's son? So... Part of the issue is that lack of respect we have for the profession. And that is also, unfortunately, influenced by the difficulty of a teacher to earn a livelihood. Because if you're a teacher and you earn 40,000 naira, you know, and you live in a place like Lagos where you have so many costs, you have children, the society is telling you that they don't value you or something is wrong somewhere. So for me, it's not there are many problems. The training is one of them, but the training is less important, in my view, than the motivation and who is going in there. So teaching, education has the lowest cutoff mark in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So you have law, medicine, all these kind of things. And the lowest cutoff at the bottom of all is to study education. So, for example, to study physics, the cutoff is higher than the, the, the cutoff to study education physics, meaning that you are not qualified to study physics, but you are qualified to teach physics, which is entirely absurd. So you find a situation where people who go there, not all, if you have a good portion who go there because they found nothing else, you are lacking a very important thing, which is motivation and passion. Medicine and education are very similar professions where without a passion or without an interest, because the most important thing in education is people's lives. So if you don't have an interest, you won't be good, no matter how well we train you, because you will not connect. So your company, Gidimo Bao Limited, has a product called Gidimo. Now, Gidimo encourages yes. learning through gaming, but a lot of people see gaming as something on serious students focus on, or at best a distraction of some sort. So what do you mm. hope to achieve with this um, learning solution? Okay, so I would I would give a different nuance. I don't th we don't focus on learning through gaming. We focus on learning, and we focus on learning through engagement, right? Because there are what are called the laws of learning. Then there are six standard laws of learning that people use, but some lists go up to nine, ten, and you have the, what's called the law of readiness, the law of recency, the law of exercise the law of um, outcome, the law of priority. You have all these laws. And for the teenage group, which is what you focus on in um, early teenage years, is what you focus on in senior high school, the biggest um, problem from the teacher to student point of view is engagement, law of readiness. Readiness is, is their mind with you or is their mind in a soccer match or in the girl sitting in front of them in class. So... For high engagement for that sector, high engagement for a banker or high engagement for a, a market woman will probably be designed differently. But we're pedagogists. We do learning design. We do um, design of the entire learning outcome. And so for that segment, we do gamification for our engagement design. And so... It's and when most parents um, you see it, they find it very fascinating because their children. You don't need to force them to go and read. And what we do is we understand the child psychology of a 14-year-old, and they're fascinated by things that are bigger than them. They're fascinated by quests and journeys and achievements and worlds. So if you say to them something that looks boring, come and learn physics, chemistry, biology. If you have a very good teacher. That person can make that physics look like the most exciting thing in the world. Mm. And we've done a lot of iterations. We've done a lot of um, gamific gamified learning. This time around, we've come out with a learning game where the youth are taught other things outside school. They're taught valiant, uh, bravery. They're taught about ideals. And they're taught about transforming Nigeria via this land of Kirion, which they have to transform. They master it by mastering their work. So we're also telling them a story that the way to turn your country around, the way to be a great person is to master that your curriculum. So it's actually a curriculum mastery game 
that takes you over those nine terms that take you SS1, SS2, SS3, every single subject, every single topic in every single subject, you must master it to transform the land of Kirion. You okay, must I, become I, a grandmaster. I also saw Sorry. that there is some form of reward system on the platform. How important yeah. would you say having a reward system or a reward mechanism is to learning for teenagers? Okay, beautiful. So, um, reward is something one has to do with care and um, to handle carefully. Because in Nigeria today, many youth feel that if there isn't a pecuniary monetary or physical material return to something, that thing is not worth doing. And as I always ask people, let's just assume your mother is broke, but she's the most wonderful mother in the world. Will you not like her? You know, so it's not everything in life that is about the financial value. However, we are trying to change the reasoning, change the youth, and make them realize that the solution to your future is what you know. There's something called KSA, knowledge, skills, and attitudes. That's what we're all about. The mission of my company is to deliver opportunity and the knowledge required to exploit it to every willing learner. So we're telling them that the opportunity of the 21st century is related to knowledge. People still think it is related to who you know. I know somebody who was, is from a very, very poor family who is sitting in Bagada and who is earning um, $2,000 a month, sitting down there in Bagada because of what he knows, that used to be 720,000 naira a month. 26 years old, he learned how to code. From a poor family, is now the breadwinner of the entire extended family. And we're saying it's not, it's not who is your uncle, who is your auntie. Anywhere that is still operating that way, better flee from that place because that place is going to die. Is what do you know? So knowledge and learning is its own reward, which is what we signal by everything on Gidmo gives you something. And there's nothing you do in Gidmo, you won't get something. You will get what you learned. You will get data. We're very liberal. We're giving data also because data is very difficult for them. Because our platform, you don't need data to use it. It actually gives you more data. So the platform itself, we use 50 megabytes or something. But it will give you 1.5 gig or 1.2 gig every single week if you hit your learning goals. Mm. So we play a delicate balance. Every time they hit their learning goals, they get an instant thing. But the point where the bigger point is not as if I want to bribe you, but I'll tell you that learning is where your future is. So whenever you learn, there's something in it, material or immaterial. But what we don't try to do is say, I will pay you to learn because that won't work it to actually even deform the child. So it's something one uses with care. I also do lots of things with no reward. And we say, you know, seize your own future. This is for you. So it doesn't need a reward. But they like competing. Competition is very big in them. And competitions always have something you are competing for. So that's why we do a lot of, um, we've been doing quarterly tournaments for about a year now. And we give out television, um, computers, phones, things like that. We had the Sub-Saharan African CEO of Citibank last time giving out our rewards. So we do that a lot. But that is like a supporting activity okay. to the learning. They like it a lot, by the way. Sorry. It's been an interesting conversation. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Adik Besson. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been an enlightening conversation on this episode with the CEO and founder of U Lesson Education, Sim Shagaya, and Dr. Tunji Adik Besson, who is the CEO of Gidi Mobile Limited. Thank you for watching. To catch up on this conversation and all our exclusive content, do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. And of course, please um, do share. My name is Elsie Godwin saying stay safe.